Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. Today we're going to talk to you about something that every snake goes through and it can kind of make a lot of first time owners a little bit nervous and that is snakes shedding. And there's several things that you can see in most snakes before they shed to kind of let you know what's going on. So we've got snakes in all different uh, parts of the cycle. So we're going to start with the first thing you'll see. This one, your snake will just look overall a little bit dull a lot of times in color. And this is Kronos, our jungle jag. You may remember him. Uh, he was our most popular video. And his color looks terrible right now if you compare it to before. Almost looks like these colors are just not as bright as normal. This is usually a really screaming yellow, and you can check that on our other videos. Uh, and then you'll also see the belly turns pink. Looks like somebody's been smacking them like you did when you were kids. Hold them down, smack them on the belly, turn it turns pink, and that's what it kind of looks like. It almost looks like a sunburn would be a great way to describe it. And that pink coloration is kind of, and that dull, that dull color and that pink coloration is kind of your first indication that they're probably going to go into shed. And snakes in shed tend to be a little bit grumpier. I can find this lid where I put it. And they also uh, may not eat for you quite as well. So once you get done seeing that, the next thing you're going to see like my buddy Merlin here. Merlin's our mystic. You've met him before. And again, his color looks really drab right now. He looks nothing like what he would normally wear. This black would be really black. This would have a really pretty hue to it. And now he looks kind of blah. And if Merlin would do us a favor of unwrapping, there it is. You can see his face. See how blue the eye is? What's happening, you don't mind the dog scratch at the door, is as the new, the new scales are forming, you get that blue coloration. So he's also got a pink belly, but he's taken it one step further, and that eye has turned that blue. Uh, on some of your lighter snakes, it won't actually turn in blue, it'll just cloud over. On your normal ball pythons, it turns a very deep blue. So that's one thing to look for. While they're like this, he's pretty much blunt. So he's without one of his senses. So when you handle them, they may be a little more nervous. This is a good time to get bit by them, things like that. Uh, what you want to start doing when you see this, that pink belly, that blue eye, is you want to push that humidity up higher than normal. If you're running your humidity about 50%, which is kind of what I'd recommend for a ball python, you see that, get it to 75 or 80 if you can. What you're going to see next is like our buddy Odin. Now Odin looks pretty good. He had a clouded over eye and he had some bad color before. He's kind of come out of it and looks nice, but he hasn't shed yet. And what they'll do is they'll go back to looking pretty decent, and you'll think everything's okay, but some people even say, well, I think it ate the skin. It didn't eat the skin. They'll get to looking pretty good again, and then they'll shed and look amazing. So that's Odin, our banana, and he should shed probably any time in the next couple days. And last but not least, you're going to come in, you're going to open your cage to find this one day. This is Loki, our lesser male. And Loki, there's his skin, and there is the snake, and you can see what you're going to have. Uh, he's going to look, you know, as best as he's looked in a long time. He's going to have really nice bright colors, have that new fresh paint. And there's a couple things to do with this skin. We actually just pulled him in the skin out of the tub. I haven't inspected it yet. It's still wet and moist, meaning it, he just shed it fairly recently. Some people can say these, you can use them to monitor growth. <laughs> The length of the skin is not an accurate depiction of the length of the snake because it does tend to stretch and do some weird varied things. But uh, it'll give you an idea of how things are going if you really want to do that. Usually you can just look at them and tell. I prefer to monitor weights, but to each their own. One thing that is good to do, if you can get these to unroll, and don't worry about tearing it unless you're going to save it for something, but if you can find the face on here. This is what you want for a shed too. One nice long continuous piece. That's a good healthy shed. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of blood by the vent. No big deal. But what we want to do is stretch this thing out. Get to the face of the snake. And the snakes actually have scales over their eye. That's why that eye turns blue. It is a known problem spot for snakes shedding. You want to make sure those eyes are coming off, those eye caps. Uh, so if you can find them on the shed, 
that's one way of knowing that you got them both off of there. So we're going to take a look at Loki here and see. A lot of times they'll rip the face off too and you have to go find it in his cage. Which looks like it might be the case here. So I go to show you something. I'm kind of a cuff and I kind of make myself look like an idiot. That tends to happen. Probably more than I care to admit. And on Loki's shed, what we're not seeing is the actual face at all. He tore it off right before the face. This would be the bottom jaw. That's the spot. You can see that spot with no scales right there on my finger. That's where that bottom jaw kind of stretches out. And there's like uh, a fold there you'll see if you ever look at the underneath side of your snake. And as you can see, the top of it didn't make it off. Which means it is probably in his cage. Now one thing about the cages. I did tell you to up humidity. So what we don't do is much cleaning when they go into a shed cycle. They tend to get in their water dish and spill that around and they make it really humid. We'll leave it like this until they shed. And then once they shed, now we're going to clean this cage out as well and give him some fresh litter in there. But I also don't see his face in here anywhere, do you? Cameraman, Kurt? Nope. Well, sometimes you don't find it. And if you don't find it, the best thing you can do is look back at the snake and inspect him. And what we're looking for are the eyes really clear. And you can see that one's extremely clear. Sometimes we'll get kind of a sheen on it. Whoop, come here, buddy. No reason to restrict his movement to do this. And the same over here. And you can see that both those eyes look really clear, look really good. So there's pretty much no chance that there's retained spectacle on there. Sorry. So we'll put him back up. We'll cut that camera, we'll do a little cleaning, and we'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to follow us, subscribe. If you have any questions, please ask. Uh, we do this out of I have a question. love for the snakes. What's the question? What happens if your snake has a bad shed? What can you do? <clears throat> if your snake has a bad shed, and I don't have any having a bad shed right now, if you keep snakes long enough, it's going to happen. So one, don't beat yourself up. Typically what it causes is the humidity was too low. So know that next time you see that, push that humidity a little bit higher. Uh, for that current bad shed, probably the best thing you can do for them is bathe them. And the best way to do that is to take a tub, fill it full of lukewarm water to just over where the snake would be. We'll put that tub up. I'll show you what we do. We'll pretend our banana's having a bad shed here. I'd fill it full of water to about here. So he's submerged except for where he's floating. And you don't want that water to be hot. Remember, whatever temperature you put that water at, that little body is going to be at. So I kind of like to make it, you know, where it's not cold but not hot or warm to the touch. About 85 degrees to 88 degrees is where you want that water. I put the lid on it. There's enough air exchange in these tubs. He's not going to drown. He's going to get air. And I soak him for at least 10 to 15 minutes, okay? So let him have that nice warm soak. When that's done, take him out of the water. By now they're usually pretty wanting to move. I let them crawl through my hands, if you will, and just kind of let the skin roll off in my hands. I'm not peeling it off. You can damage them that way. It should kind of come off on its own. And I'll let them roll it off if you can, and I'll put him back in his environment. And I'll come back the next day, and I'll bathe him again. And I'll do that several times until we get all that bad old skin off, uh, or at least the vast majority of it. So. That's probably the easiest way. There are some commercial products like Sheddies and those kind of things. I've personally never used any of them. I've just done the baiting, and that works pretty well for us. Any other questions? Nope. All right, guys, don't forget to like us, subscribe to us, follow us on Facebook. we got a lot of cool stuff coming with some babies. I'm really excited for this season, so I hope you guys are as well. And uh, we'll see you next week.